Now I'd like to introduce Janine McBurney, um, who is a lecturer in the Faculty of Science and Technology and has been for almost 20 years, because you don't look old enough to be lecturing for 20 years. Um, her career has focused on, on helping people from diverse backgrounds to understand and appreciate a range of environmental issues from a variety of perspectives. She believes that having insights into others' points of view is critical if we are going to achieve uh, environmental uh, sustainability for the long term. Please welcome Janine. Hi, thanks very much. I'm very um, proud and privileged to be invited to speak today. I have been for almost 20 years. Someone told me that the other day, so I was pretty shocked as well. Never mind. So much has changed since then. I did a Bachelor of Education. My first degree was in environmental education. And anything 20 years ago that had the word environment in it, you were classed as a green tree hugging hippie. <laughs> That's changed a lot. Like a lot, of, a lot of our students still fit into that category. Anthony, I'm sure, would agree with me there. But not all of them, and nowhere near all of them. A lot of my peers that I studied with are wearing suits every day and the leaders and managers in very big companies, in government, organisations in Australia and all around the world and having a very, very big impact. So I think we should be very proud of that. I think it's a discipline that's changed a fair bit over the time. A lot more people understand a little bit more about what it is. The triple bottom line thing comes out a little bit as well. But I think the students, I have a very large first year class and the students coming into that class, they seem, come, they seem to be coming in knowing about that already. That's not so much of a new thing for them. Maybe for, for our generation and older it might be. Also have the privilege to teach students from all across the different faculties at Deakin and that's something else that's changed a lot over the time that I've been here. The units I teach are compulsory for some students but not for all and it's moved from sort of probably 70% of the students in them would be doing it because they have to but now it's probably half of them are doing it because it's an elective and it's because it's got the word, some of it has the word environment, some of it has the word sustainability so that is something they're coming in in first year and they're interested and they want to know about it. And they're also coming in the action part that Jeff spoke about and that Jane spoke about before. We can't just say that it's all going to be lovely and we're going to do it. They want to know how we're going to do it. They're not interested in... Yeah, they want the background and they want all that other stuff that goes along with that, but they, they want to know how. And the other thing that we have to be very careful about, this can be quite a... It can be a bit depressing, and I know that's probably the wrong word to use, but some of the students I have had in the past say it all seems a bit too hard and what can I do as an individual? That's what they want to know, and absolutely what Jane said before. We, have, we can't just sort of come to work and be sustainable. We have to take that on into our everyday lives as well, and it isn't that hard. Earlier this year, well, a few weeks ago, I asked my first-year students in my environmental sustainability unit if they had all the money in the world and they had to do something to do with making a big difference, to do with sustainability, what would that be? And it was people needed to know more about it. Education, that was them. A lot of people think the environment students are into just plants and animals. It wasn't that, it was how come my family, my friends don't know about this? How come this is stuff that you're telling us about now? I didn't know that if I buy a mobile phone that that's actually having an impact on the waste or the, the people, environmental justice issues of the people that got the materials to build that phone, the impact it had on those. That's something everyone should know. And they're quite shocked and mortified occasionally at how little the broader community knows. So I am here really to talk about education for sustainability. That's where I'm, I'm coming from. But I think they were very much for taking individual responsibility as well. And one thing they really wanted to do is they did really want to do work at Deakin. Like if there was a project they could do on this campus or at Warrnambool or at Geelong, that's what they wanted to be involved in that, something in their local community and if it could happen here that was fantastic. The other thing I wanted to talk about is it isn't just, I mean Jeff and I are from the same school and Anthony is as well, that's probably a bit of a shame because I think we need to recognise it sort of makes it come from the science point of view again. It's not, it has to be from everywhere. A few years ago, I was very lucky to work with a few people, Sonia included, um, and Teresa, um, Tanya from Business and Law, people from faculties all over Deakin, to develop some curriculum on sustainability. So it was cross-faculty, interdisciplinary, 
curriculum to do with sustainability. It was driven by the health faculty, not, not by my faculty at all. Those people decided that something had to happen. Marty as well was involved in that initial reference group. We had people from Environment Victoria as well as um, La Trobe Uni. Someone came from La Trobe Uni to help us out as well. Just to sort of put it into stop us looking too internally at what was happening. In 2009, that was a module, a trial that had 80 students and they were, half of those were volunteers. Half of those students did it for no academic credit at all. They did it because they wanted to do it and they wanted to learn more about it, which was fantastic. It's now a unit that's offered for second and third year students called Creating Sustainable Futures. It's only at the moment offered on this campus, but a lot of comments that I get at, well, well, how come? We have had students last year came up from engineering and he drove up from Geelong because he really, really wanted to do that. And he got to meet Maria Forsyth, who's is fantastic and sort of changed his whole career around, which was amazing. Kimberly and I, Kimberly James and I spoke at a conference about this unit a couple of years ago. And I think I do need to just briefly touch, I'm going to be positive, but the barriers to some of this. At this conference, and we talked about um, this unit, and it was packed, the session, it was the International Conference on Environmental, Social and Economic Sustainability. And our session was packed, and the most frequent question I asked about, how did you get your university, how did they let you do this? How did it happen? How did you pass admin? How did it fit in the university system? And as all of us will tell you that were involved in that, it was extremely hard. And I fought a lot of, had some probably what I thought at the time might be career limiting conversations <laughs> with some people. Turned out it was okay. Some of those people aren't here anymore, so that's good. <laughs> um, but it was for them, maybe not so for me. But I think it was, the thing was, the drivers are more important. Like even this, a, a crazy thing about trying to come up with a unit code, because it had to sit in a faculty because Callista couldn't cope if it didn't actually sit in a faculty. We don't have systems set in place for cross faculty units. We sort of do now, but we figured out a way around it, which works. But it was hard, it was very hard. The reason it happened were people that kept fighting for it, like Teresa from Health, who didn't give up, Sonia, who didn't give up, myself, Sue, who from Environment Victoria, who is still being paid casually to help with this, but she, she just is so passionate about it all that she makes it work. But the other thing that worked really well and the reason it happened, and Anthony was one of our earliest enrollers in this unit, the students really loved it. They got to work with students from business and law, you know, engineering, health, um, arts. We do, you know, we have drama people come in and do stuff with us. And that's about the only unit, they tell me, that they actually really mix that much with people from all over. And it's more real world. It's a more real world situation. Like when you go out to the workforce, not everyone is going to think like you. You know, if you have an environmental science degree, you might have to go and work for an energy company. You have to know how to talk that talk. You have to know how to work with those people successfully. So I guess um, where to from now? There is a lot happening. I think where we need to... I'm part of the um, Education for Sustainability Working Party that was set up recently. I think that's what it's called. <laughs> and what we need to do... I know that there are people in architecture and in health and people at Warrnambool that doing stuff on sustainability but we don't know where they are or what they're doing. Um, I was asked the other day to sort of tick boxes of where all the sustainability curriculum was at the uni. Couldn't do it, all right? I know that it's happening and I know that it's there, but we need to, that's, I think, one of our first tasks is to bring that all together so that we can build on that. We have a really good base. We're not starting from scratch. We don't have to, but we do have to put the effort in to pull it all together so we're not reinventing anything and giving people credit for the work that they're doing. I know that they're interested. And it's the actions. I think it's the actions are really important. That's for education, for sustainability. I think that's what we need to do. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Janine. And in the theme of trying to, to, to keep your confidence and your, and your passion alive, the, uh, the working groups have been very effective to date. And I think with, with the continuing input, we'll be able to, to pursue that. And I think the Create work stream has certainly been looking very deliberately at those areas and, and how that will then morph into our Live the Future strategic plan, I think, will be, um, will be very important.